these brushes. What you want to do is take some super glue. A subscriber actually told me about this. You run it across the base of this. It'll hold all of the little fibers in. Best thing you want to do is have a fiber. Let me see if it gets soaked in. Yeah, last thing you want to do is have a fiber get loose in your part. We don't like it. No hairs. I like to dedicate this segment to uh, Deathstroke. Your hashtag will <laughs> be used greatly. Hashtag. Okay, so we're going to be mixing our 2000 resin with our 2060 hardener. And it's a three to one ratio, so three parts epoxy to one part hardener. And in their gallon mixing kit, they give you a bunch of different cups. If you take the largest cup to mix in, and you fill the second largest cup with epoxy. Fill up the largest cup with epoxy, and fill up the cup that has the green lid with the hardener. actually ends up being a perfect three to one ratio. So you just take both of these guys. Ooh. Yeah, that's the definition of idiot proof. I love when things are idiot proof. Cause I'll be having some real idiot moments. Everybody does. Everybody does. Cool. And you can reuse those again. So if you need to mix another one, you can just boop, boop. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to like go way in and stuff. So, and there's also if, a bunch of different size cups with like actual measurements. Like this actually has measurements on it. So if you're mixing a smaller amount, you could always do that as well. But it's just three to one. So it's the same ratio. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna take my blue squeegee and my brush and start applying it. I'm gonna tack down a spot by putting some resin on it to keep it still. Um, and since we're putting the carbon onto the part dry, we want to make sure that we really squeeze it all through. So I'm gonna definitely hit everything with the squeegee Get all the air bubbles out of the back half of it. So I'll start with that much and squeegee it in. And then once we get to the end and we get it all covered, then we will uh, trim the outside of the carbon so it all matches. Work your way from the center out. Definitely helps. If you go from the outside in, you can get some air bubbles trapped inside. Trees are pretty easy to press out, but it's always easier to do this. So you don't press the air bubble out to the edge. If it's fully wetted out, then it won't, uh, it won't come through the fabric very easily. So you might as well push it all the way to the edge and you can push out the edge of the edge. You can already see when I go over this, this edge right here, right here. It'll stay down when I actually tap it down, but it, you can see it starts to raise up. That's because this is hanging over. So a little extra, resin and then a good trim nice and close we'll take all that out of there I like these wide brushes it's almost like he's just Professional, professional, super sophisticated, licensed, certified composites man now. Yes. After building one whole vehicle, yes. a bunch of extra parts, 
we shall call him Resin Man. All right, so I'm gonna cut pretty close to the edge. Um, it's not a great idea to cut wet fabric with your nice carbon fiber uh, scissors, but if you uh, if you wipe them down with like some lacquer thinner, mineral spirits, or paint thinner, or whatever, after you're done, they're cut. Just make sure you don't forget to do that. You can see here on the edge, the carbon is running flat, and then right when it gets to the edge, it's bumping up. That's from this dangling carbon. Mm. So if you cut it and then smooth it back down again, and it doesn't have any resin, I mean, any carbon excess weighing it down, it'll actually lay flat. So it's kind of odd that it bunches up like that, but cut it off and you're good. Today. 